everyone, it's Emily from Minerva. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Birda 7752 dog coat. I'm going to show you how you need to measure your dog, cut the pattern out and then obviously we're going to get it stitched together. So let's get started. So this is Freddy. Um, Freddy is a Cocker Spaniel and he's almost two years old and that's who we're going to be making the dog coat for. So um, everything you'll need to make this um, pattern is obviously the pattern itself. It's the Birda 7752. And then you're also going to need some um, fabric. So I've got the soft shell, um, so it's kind of like a waterproof material and it is also fleece backed as well, making it nice and snuggly warm for your little dog. Um, so on the back of the pattern it gives you um, the measurements for your dog. Um, so this pattern comes in small, medium and large. So it gives you the chest measurement, the length and the neck width um, in regards to which is which. So Freddie's getting comfortable here. So the first measurement is the chest measurement. Now obviously Freddie's laid down, so we'll do another one to start off with. So the neck width of the dog. So this is obviously where um, normally your collar sits. So I'm just gonna take Freddie's collar off for a moment, just so I can get a, and the only reason I've took his collar off, he's got like a little um, sort of thing on there that makes it a little bit wider. So, 14 inches there for Freddy. So that would correspond more with a um, medium. Um, so then the length of your dog. So we're gonna go from the base of the neck all the way down to the bottom. And Freddy here is measuring 18 inches. So he sits between a medium and large in that sense. Um, a medium would be 15 and three quarters and a large is 21 and three quarters. Um, so he's sitting between a medium and a large there. Now Fred, we need you to stand up for me one second while I measure your chest. So we're gonna go around the widest part of his body. So right under, um, right under his front paws. And Freddie measures 23 inches. Um, so for chest measurement, again, is sitting between a medium and a large. Um, so because of that, I'm actually going to cut out a large. Um, and then what I can always do is fit it along the dog as we're going along, which I can show you. And if I do need to make any, um, you know, adjustments from there, then we can do. So now we know the measurements of your dog, uh, now it's time to cut the pattern out. Um, so the best thing to do is open up all your pattern pieces and lay them nice and flat. Now inside your instructions as well, um, obviously you get your step-by-step -step instructions, um, but at the top here yeah, it will tell you what pattern pieces you need for your coat. Because as you can see there's quite a lot of different variations on here. Um, so I'm making um, view A which is the one down here. I'm going to cut patterns one, two, three and four out and I'll come back when I've done that. So I've cut out all the patterns, now I need to cut it out on my fabric so that's what we're going to do next. So now we're all ready to cut the pieces out. So one thing to bear in mind when you're doing this is look at all the pieces that you've got and how many of each you need to cut out. So the pattern pieces itself give you all this information. So piece A here, it says we need two of these. Um, so I know that if I fold my fabric in half like I have here, so I've folded selvage to selvage and I've got a fold here along the top. And um, so I know when I place this pattern on, pin it on and cut it out, I'm gonna get two of those. Um, the other pieces, for example, so this is piece 2A, um, and this says cut one but on the fold. So I need to look for the side that's marked cut on the fold. So this would be up here. It says centre back fold. So I'm going to put that on the fold of the fabric so that when I pin that on and cut that out, I'm, again, I'm cutting through the two layers of fabric, that I'm going to get a piece that's twice the size of it and like a mirror image of itself. And that is exactly the same for piece three and piece four. So make sure you're looking at what's cut on the fold, um, what's cut on the grain, um, what you need two of and what you might only need one of. Um, and then kind of have a play around with where everything goes on your fabric 
some patterns will tell you the best way to put them on your fabric but if not um, you know if you're working with small uh, measures of fabric have a mess around with how you can get it on um, and then cut it out from there so that's what I'm going to do next so the next step would be to transfer any markings that we've got on the pattern pieces onto the fabric itself so this is pattern piece a which is the main coat piece and um, so down here we've got two black rectangles which is basically the positioning of the straps that then attach around your dog's chest and obviously fasten together and um, so I need to mark these squares onto the fabric itself so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark all four corners of the rectangle so the little trick I use here is I get a pin so you can see my pin there and I'm going to puncture a hole in all four corners just of the pattern paper just so then I can get through there with a piece of tailor's chalk or a fabric marker and um, whatever you're using because I've got quite a dark fabric here and um, I'm going to be using a piece of tailor's chalk so I've marked all four of the um, corners there and then I'm going to get a piece of tailor's chalk and I'm going to mark through those four holes. And then I can take a peek underneath just to make sure that it's got those markings there. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to remove the pattern paper. So now I've got a ruler and what I'm going to do is connect all four of the dots to mark up the rectangle. Just how it was on the pattern piece. And there we go. So what I need to do now is do the exact same, but on this side. So I'm going to get my pattern piece on again. Obviously what you'll realise now is that you'll need to also flip your pattern piece over so it, that it fits where you need it. And I'm going to follow the exact same process, um, taking my chalk, marking the holes and then connecting the four dots together. The other thing we need to mark on here is actually the dart which is next to the two rectangles here and um, so what a dart does is shape a garment um, to make it look a lot more better fitting and um, it just shapes around um, natural parts of the body and um, so obviously in this case um, this is going to help it shape a lot more better um, around um, around your dog so I'm going to do the exact same thing I'm going to get get the pin I had earlier mark a hole in the top of the dart um, and then I'm going to um, make a slit with my scissors on the bottom of the dart and then I'm going to use I'm going to use my chalk to mark through those points so just as before as well I've used my ruler to connect those dots together and I'm going to do the exact same on the other side so now it's time to start sewing everything together so we're starting off with the main dog coat piece and we're going to place them right sides together. So the waterproof sides should be right sides facing. You should be able to see the soft fleecy side. And the fleecy side as well is on the underneath. So you've got two edges. The side that I'm pinning together there is the long straight edge. Um, you've also got the bottom curved edge. But it's the long straight edge which will be directly down um, the centre of the dog's back. I'm going to sew that together with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So don't forget when you begin to sew you need to do a reverse stitch at the, at the start point. This is so that everything doesn't come unravelled. And use the markers on your sewing machine to keep yourself to a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Don't forget to reverse stitch at the end of the seam as well. This will be the same throughout. Reverse stitch at the start and reverse stitch at the end. So the next step will be to take the piece that you've just stitched together and press that seam open so it's nice and flat. 
and then what we're going to do is top stitch down either side close to that center back seam just to make everything nice and neat so what I've done on mine as well is I've lengthened my stitch to about a three um, a longer stitch length just tends to look nice um, as a top stitch um, so make sure that you're keeping that seam nice and flat while you're doing this um, as this really does finish the look off and makes it look a lot more professional so the next stage in the sewing process is sewing the darts as I mentioned earlier this gives more shape so um, what I've done is I've transferred the darts as I mentioned on the back and what I'm going to do is get some little scissors and snip just the bottoms um, of the darts just so that I can match them together so you want to fold the dart in half the triangle in half so that those little slits match together and get the point of the triangle right on the fold and you're essentially going to sew on that line there so again reverse stitch at the start but when you get to the end um, don't reverse stitch I mean you can do uh, but my little tip here and a lot of dressmakers do this is instead of reverse stitching leave long tails of thread at the end of your seam and cut your thread off manually and then tie the ends of the thread together um, manually this just creates less um, bulk at the point of the dart makes it a lot smoother um, obviously when you reverse stitching you get quite a bulk of thread because uh, you're going over your stitch quite a few times and um, this avoids that happening time to start on the collar as you can see there's one longer edge and a shorter edge we're going to be bias binding the two short edges and the longer straight edge so open up your bias binding and place that on one of the short edges I overhung mine by about an inch we're going to be sewing on the first crease line this is like our guide for stitching reverse stitch at the start as you would normally when you get to the corner what you want to do is stop about half an inch from the edge keep your needle in that down position lift your presser foot up and then twist the bias binding round this point will look really strange but trust the process flatten your bias binding the best you can and then continue stitching repeat this process for the other corner too when you get to the end make sure you're leaving another half inch overhanging this will get trimmed down later time to fold the bias binding over as you can see when you turn the corners you've got a nice right angle there now to make everything look a lot neater I'm going to trim away the bulk of the fabric this step is optional but makes life a lot easier I would always definitely trim away the bulk in your corners So when it comes to turning your bias binding over to the wrong side what you want to do is make sure you're just covering the stitch line that we've just done with the bias binding and then when you stitch close to the edge the stitching will appear in the right place on the right side. I followed the bias tape over to cover the original stitching line. I'm heading over to the machine and changing my stitch length to a three. This just makes a nice top stitch as I mentioned previous. When it comes to turning the corner what you want to do is push all the bias tape to one side and then when you turn the corner fold it back on itself this creates a bit of a diagonal line but this will make for a nice neat finish so fold it back on itself and lower your presser foot and turn the corner So when you finish that you'll notice you've got neat stitching on both sides if you've just covered that stitching as I mentioned. Now it's time to put everything together. So to attach the collar onto the main uh, body of the dog coat you want to fold it in half and mark the centre with just a little snip and then you want to line that up um, with the centre back seam of the coat and pin or clip it in place and then just fold the rest round um, and clip it in place 
and um, we're just going to sew this together um, and baste this just so it's together for the time being but we will be more permanently stitching this in place um, later on so you can use longer stitch length on your machine just because it will be more of a tacking stitch at this point so sew this in place making sure you keep within your seam allowances To make the loop that sits at the back of the dog coat, you've got two of piece four. We're going to place them right sides together and we're going to stitch both long edges using a quarter inch seam allowance. And then what you want to do is turn this piece the right side out. Um, I did that off camera, but if you've got a loop turner that would make um, a much easier approach to doing this. Um, give it a good press on your iron and then like I'm doing here I'm going to top stitch down both long edges with a stitch length of three um, just to neaten this little loop off. Now it's time to add the bias binding all the way around the dog coat. This is going to be added on pretty much in the same way that we did on the collar. It um, doesn't really matter where you start but we're going to open it up again and we're going to be sewing all the way around, um, down one side, down the bottom of the coat, back up, along the top of the collar and back round to join where we started off. Um, so sewing the gap again and again I'm leaving about an inch unstitched at the beginning. Don't forget to reverse stitch um, when you start. Turn corners in the same way that you did on your collar, stopping about half an inch from the edge, leaving your needle in, picking your foot up and turning. So if you like me and you're going to run out of bias binding, um, leave about an inch or so um, unstitched at the ends like I have and reverse stitch. And then take your um, bias binding and unfold it and attach it right sides together with the strip that's attached and so about a quarter inch seam allowance. There's probably a few different methods on how you could do this but this is how I tend to do it, I find this the easiest. Um, so again stitch down there, quarter inch seam allowance to attach it together. And then you're essentially just going to carry on as you were so you'll start um, stitching where you left off keeping um, that seam that you've just done nice and flat um, and then hopefully you won't be able to tell where it is conveniently mine just ended up on the centre back seam um, but you can't tell it's there but that would be how you attach it together when you run out as for joining it back up when you get back round to where you started obviously I left about an inch unstitched you're basically going to stop sewing right on that stitch mark there that I'm pointing to. Um, you're going to stop right where you started and this bit's really crucial in making like a seamless join. Um, so again, just sort of go quite slow when you get to that point and again reverse stitch. Cut the excess of your bias binding off just to make this next part a lot easier for yourself. Um, and then what you want to do is you're going to sew these two ends together. Again, open them back up. But you're going to sew right at the point where your stitching meets. So for me, it's right at the bottom there along that seam. So stitch that together, um, it can be quite tricky, um, just have perseverance and lay it quite as flat as you can. Then what you want to do is trim that seam down so there's less bulk there. And you can also press that seam open as well. But as you can see, we've got um, a seamless join. It will look more seamless as we 
so this next part here so again you can trim your seams down like I did with the collar this is completely optional I actually found that I didn't need to trim um, that much off it was only mainly on curves that I did but again roll the bias binding to the back covering the stitch line that you've just sewn sewing close to the edge so that on the front you're going to get your stitch line in the right place just to show you again how to do the corners fold one side over and then fold the other edge over that to create that diagonal line hold that in place with a clip I did this on all of my corners As before as well I altered my stitch length to a 3 just to get a lot nicer the top stitch and I'm just going to sew all the way around the coat again um, to secure this bias binding down and I just kept checking to make sure it looked nice on the front as well. Again you could hand sew this if you wish. For the loop that we made earlier, this is going to go on the back of the coat, loop it round and figure out where you want it to be placed. In the end I decided to place it near the outer edges. Clip that or pin that in place and then I'm going to sew that together where my stitching already is on the bias binding. Before we go any further we need to try the coat on the dog just in case we need to adjust the chest strap. So I'm going to place the coat over Freddy and make sure it's sat exactly where I need it to be. Get Freddy to stand up. So overall so far I'm very happy with the fit uh, and then I'm just going to check where the chest strap is going to fit. So we've got our markings on the sides that we did earlier, which is for the Velcro. And I'm going to put the end of the chest strap to match up. And I'm going to see where it comes to on the other side. So if I just turn Freddy around, as you can see, this is quite a big chest strap. So if I matched it up with the other side, it's quite droopy underneath. So I'm going to cut this down um, so that it fits a lot better. After measuring Freddy, I have marked with a pin where I wanted to cut it. Um, just to show you again, obviously I've lined it up with the markings on the coat. And I pulled it around Freddy and then marked where the end came to. And then I added on about an inch um, as we're going to be hemming this. Take all the short edges and press them in around half an inch. I did this on the iron and then I'm going to clip those together. So I've got both pieces wrong sides together. So your fleecy parts are on the inside and you're looking at more the soft shell side. Like so. And then to attach these together we're actually going to use our bias binding again. I'm going to put bias binding on the chest piece just as we have before. I'm going to overhang the bias binding by about half an inch and fold that inwards. I'm sewing all the way along the crease line till I get to the end. I trim the bias binding down so it overhangs by about half an inch again at the bottom and then I fold that half an inch inwards. So trim and fold that piece inwards. Trim the excess fabric if you need to, like we have before. And then to neaten this bit off here, I've kind of folded that ending diagonally and folded it over, makes it look a lot neater. And then just sew close to the edge, making sure you're just covering that stitch line. And then we're going to repeat that process then on the other side. 
time to attach the Velcro. So I got the rough side of the Velcro, matched it up into the boxes that we chalked on earlier and cut these down to size. You need four of these all together, two on each side. To sew them on I simply stitch very close to the edge, all the way down one long edge, across the short edge, back up the other long edge and then across the final short edge. I repeated this with all four pieces. Now I'm going to take the chest strap and the soft side of the velcro and cut pieces exactly the same size as the rough pieces of velcro that we've just done and I'm going to sew these on all four corners of the chest strap following the same principle of sewing all the way around the rectangles. To attach your snap fastening, place the coat together how it'll sit on the dog. Decide where you want the fastenings. I decided to put them directly in between the collar pieces. Measure and mark with some tailor's chalk exactly where you'd like them to go. I decided to use three. Make sure you pop in the cap side on the front portion. And then obviously the fastening part underneath. and then using your tool, snap that together. You could also use some sew-on fastenings as well. To mark where the poppers will go on the other side, pop the collar pieces together again. Take a piece of tailor's chalk and feel for where the poppers are on the other side. Using your tailor's chalk, mark that on. Then repeat the process with the other side of the fastening. So the coat's now all sewn together. Now that all that's left to do is try it on Freddie. So I've already attached one side of the chest strap to the coat. I'm going to lay this over Freddie. Get him to stand up. Good boy. And then attach that to the other side. And then we can use the poppers that we've just attached, pop those together, and flatten down the collar. So there we have it, one dog coat, all finished and modelled beautifully by Freddie. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.